So you just open MK Mobile and you have no idea what to do. Well, I have good news for you because this is the very best video that you can find about being a beginner in MK Mobile. More or less, I'm going to cover every single aspect of the game. I'm going to explain to you what should be your general strategy in the very first day, in the very first weeks, what you should be doing in the different game modes, which are the best characters, etc. So without any further ado, let us start with the first topic we're about to cover, and it is what a beginner should be doing in the very first day after he opens the game. And in the very first day of your MK Mobile journey, you will be offered a pack for free. This pack is awesome because it guarantees an MK11 diamond and also 500 souls. And if you're wondering, okay, how do I know whether I was lucky in that pack? Well, again, you came to the right place because if you pulled MK11 Scorpion from that pack, you are exceptionally lucky. He is the best pull that you can ever wish to get from the beginner pack. There is one reason for that. MK11 Scorpion is by far the best diamond in the game at low fusion. He's super useful at fusion zero due to one main trait, his ability to inflict damage over time effects. And by the way, in that he is unmatched. Generally speaking, my very first advice to every new player will be the following. If you can use dots, always try to use dots, more or less, that's it. Because dots, or in other words, damage over time effects, such as fire, poison, and bleed, they work based on percentage health. So it doesn't matter whether your enemy have 100% health or 1 million health, their health bars are going to evaporate if you put some dots on them. However, even if you don't pull MK11 Scorpion, don't worry, there are other Pretty, pretty decent picks such as MK11 Sub Zero, MK11 Lucane, MK11 Sindel, and MK11 Rain. So, what you should be doing on your day two and day three in MK Mobile? It is simple open gold packs for 150 souls and open silver pack for coins. You're doing that for one simple reason. In the beginning, you just need to have characters so that you can have some kind of roster. You will need this roster in order to do successfully challenges, you need this roster in order to do quests, you name it. But in the very first two, three days, you need to get characters, and this is super, super important. Once those two or three days have passed, I would advise every single beginner to go ahead and start buying classic packs for multiple reasons. Uh, and more or less the best reason is the fact that this pack has three of the best characters that you can obtain at low fusion, Classic Rain, Classic Lucane, and Classic Raiden. And on top of that, this particular pack has a lot of gold characters that can carry your accounts, such as Classic Scorpion, such as Classic Kano, such as Classic Sonia. But we're going to get to that in details in a second. And of course, I won't miss to mention the fact that after two or three days have passed, you should stop opening silver packs, uh, even though you can get pretty decent silver cards such as Silver Kenshi and Silver Scorpion, and you should start opening equipment packs so that you can start working on your gears. And this should be super, super important. The equipment pack can drop gears such as the Rat Hammer, such as Soul Medallion, such as more or less any block breaking gear. Trust me, you're going to need those. So what should be your main strategy in MK Mobile when it comes to fusing characters? In my opinion, having two or three gold characters at very high fusion, let's say fusion 7 or fusion 8, and all the other gold characters at fusion 0 is better than having all golds at fusion 1. Reason being, certain fights in towers should require you, actually will require you to have high fusion gold or diamond character. If you don't have those, you won't be able to pass the stage. So make sure to build two or three gold characters as fast as possible when it comes to fusions. Uh, generally, those should be characters that utilize special one, or in other words, they are special one spammers, such as Combat Cup Johnny Cage, such as Hansu Hasashi, Stun Double Johnny Cage, Inferno and Nujitsu Scorpion, and of course, there are certain exceptions, such as Covert Ops Cassie Cage. She basically mainly uses her special tool, but she is one of the very best gold characters for beginners. If you're asking me who is the absolutely best character to carry your account, this is Classic Scorpion. And there's a simple uh, reason for that. He is one of the very best fighters in the game. He has dots, he has bleed on special one, and he can be easily uh, maxed out because you can get copy of him from the Faction War store and you can get him from the Classic pack. He can drop there. Generally speaking, probably the best gold to fuse as fast as possible. 
And as I mentioned the Faction War store, I would advise to just buy one copy of Classic Ermac from there. Uh, however, keep in mind that Classic Ermac can also drop from the Classic Pack, so if you got him already from the Classic Pack, then don't bother at all. You just need one copy of Classic Ermac so he can kill bosses for you. And then start building Classic Scorpion Fusions until you get him maxed out. From that point, you can focus on the gear. And the first gear to focus on, in my opinion, the best one is the Bloody Voodoo Doll. Also, keep in mind that in the Faction War store, there is something which is called consumables. It is not worth purchasing any of the consumables. The only consumables that I would say that they are partially useful and partially, let's call it that way, worth buying uh, are the uncommon equipment repair, which goes only for 40 rubies, and the rare equipment repair, which goes for 150 rubies. Do not buy any other consumables for rubies, and even those two, I would advise you to buy only if you have no other option. And the last thing I want to mention about your main fighter, on the main fighters, let's say that you focus on two or three goats and building the fusions, you should make sure that you develop their feats of strength bonuses with the highest priority on the little hit chance. Because 8% little hit chance can make huge difference in difficult fight. The power generation and attack boosts are also important. And of course, there's another thing that you need to make sure to invest in, and this is the support cards of those two or three gold characters. You can increase their attack and you can increase also their health. But don't go really, really crazy there. Just focus on the support cards of the characters that you use all the time. And finally, when it comes to the general store, I would advise you generally to avoid buying gold characters from there unless one of those characters is uh, one of your main fighters. For instance, if you're using Hanso Hasashi Scorpion, he's Fusion 7, and he's available in the store, I would advise you to buy him. But if you don't use Hanso Hasashi Scorpion at all, you don't even have him and he's in the store, then, and then I will advise you to just pass because it makes no sense to go ahead and buy him. Now, there is an exception to this rule. Sometimes you have characters that are very, very useful support. And if you uh, have enough souls, you can consider getting such character. I'm talking about support type of character, such as, for instance, High Tech Jackie. High Tech Jackie is an exceptionally good at Fusion Zero because she gives power generation boost to all Spec Ops characters. So, if you're using a lot of Johnny, perhaps you can consider getting only one copy of High Tech Jackie Bricks so that she can amplify the power generation of your Johnny. However, if you already have her, again, you shouldn't bother getting another copy. Remember, you should focus in fusing up your main fighters, not your main supportive characters. When it comes to supportive characters, you should only focus on unlocking them. And the best way to distinguish a good supportive character is the fact that in 100% of the cases, their passive will be as efficient as Fusion Zero as it will be at Fusion 10. So two really, really good names come to mind. The first one is Combat Cup Sonia. She can give red card regardless of her fusion. She can do that at Fusion Zero level one. And Warlock Quan Chi can resurrect your ally at Fusion Zero level one. However, if we take a look, for instance, at Combat Cup Johnny, he has increase of attack, but in order for this to be effective, he needs to have higher stats. So in other words, it need to be higher fusion. Long story short, when it comes to the fighters, you should try to get them fused up as fast as possible, so you should focus on their fusion, and when it comes to support characters, you should focus only on unlocking them. Another very important thing to realize is that not all diamonds can work great at low fusion. So unlocking one diamond can have amazing impact on your account, while unlocking other diamond will have zero impact on your account. So try to unlock in the beginning all diamonds that are great at low fusion. Of course, I'm going to give you a list. It is not complete, but more or less gets all the good diamonds and goats that can be super, super beneficial at Fusion Zero. And the list goes like this. MK11 Scorpion, we already established why. Ravenous Melina, Strike Force Scorpion, The Joker, Assassin Scarlet, MK1 Shang Tsung, MK11 Lucane, Classic Lucane, Classic Rain, Classic Raiden, MK11 Sindel, MK11 Rain, MK11 Fujin, Classic Reptile, Hellspawn Scorpion, Dead Red Kitana, and an exceptionally good goat that you should have in the beginning, 
is Pyroman Satania. She's super, super useful, even at Fusion Zero. Unlocking a Great Diamond or your Great Goat that you don't have should have priority to getting one extra fusion on other diamond and one extra fusion even of your main goat fighter. So in a way, if you're Classic Scorpion and Fusion 8 and you have to choose uh, between getting Classic Scorpion to Fusion 9 or getting a copy, for instance, of Ravenous Melina, actually unlocking Ravenous Melina, then you should prioritize unlocking Ravenous Melina because you don't have her in the first place. And she is exceptionally good once unlocked. And when it comes to the crypt, do not rush the difficulty on the crypt. And in the beginning, try to beat the crypt, not to beat the crypt with the best bonus, because this is going to be super, super difficult in the very first days or the very first weeks in your MK Mobile journey. So start with normal difficulty, and then when you're ready, progress to hard. Don't rush Elder, it's not really worth. Do it only when you feel that you're strong enough to grind Elder, once again to grind. So this should be uh, meaning that you don't really try hard to grind Elder. This will come with time, don't worry about it. When it comes to the Crypt Store, the general case goes like this. Prioritize the gear, especially tower epic weapons. However, in some cases it will be better to also buy one of the characters that I already mentioned, one of the characters that are great at Fusion Zero and you don't have them, such as Ravenous Melina, MK11 Scorpion, MK11 Sindel, we already established those. Also, if you see any of these gear in the Crypt Store, make sure to buy it immediately. Leaving that, Varmin's Lucky Hat, Frost Orb, Shinta of Malice, Ceremonial Pipe, Spectre Burning Vengeance, Time Traveler Cool Factor. Those pieces are exceptionally strong once unlocked, even at Fusion Zero. And two more pieces that I missed to mention, but I believe they are super, super useful as well. Those are the Rocking Bowling Stones and the Restless Ninja Figure. Very, very solid gear at Fusion Zero. All right, when it comes to souls and how to get them, the very best source of souls in MK Mobile are the one hour quests, not the four hours, not the eight hours, not the 12 hours, and especially not the 24 hours. Use eight hour quests only before you go to bed. Generally, just refresh the one hour quest. Just spam them to get the maximum amount of souls daily. Also, every beginner should complete the 10 free ads every single time twice a day. It is a great source of souls, but also coins and characters. And you need those a lot in the beginning. Also, do not forget to complete your daily trial objectives. Another easy source of coins and souls. There is this thing in MK Mobile that exists and it is called special upgrade cards and also level up cards. Use them wisely. For example, the special upgrade cards, use them only to buy the most expensive level of the special attack. Usually those are the ones past level six or seven. Use your level up cards wisely again. Use them only to get the most difficult levels to gain and those are past level 40. In other words, don't use your precious level up cards to get your character from level 1 to level 10. Use them instead to get your character from level 40 to level 50. In terms of leveling up characters and the fastest way to do that, it is simple. It is Faction Wars. Try to team up two bronze cards, High Fusion, with a newly acquired diamond card to make sure you will more or less win every fight and you'll get easy experience for your new diamond. And speaking of faction wars, you shouldn't spend much time grinding survival mode in the beginning. Just try to rank as high so that you get a gold card in the end of the season. More or less that's it. Do not spend tons of time on faction wars early in your MK Mobile journey. The most important game modes for beginners in MK Mobile are Towers and the Crypt. Focus your time there. Talents in MK Mobile are super important, so completing the Shao Kahn Tower as fast as possible should be your priority. And since you'll be mainly using characters that rely on Special 1 predominantly, as we already established in the beginning of the video, use talents to help those characters become more proficient with the Special 1 spam. The most important talents you must use in the beginning are Precision and Black Dragon Training in Offense, Hawk Stance in Defense, Meditation and Outward Scorch in Support. Of course, the talent that you would need will differ based on the enemy team you have to deal with, but generally, those talents will more or less give you value in every fight.
Dragon crystals are important and they are super difficult to get. So the moment you get 350 dragon crystals, make sure to open a casket that will give you an epic piece. This is the number one priority for you when it comes to dragon crystals. And when it comes to epic pieces, make sure to get a friendship or brutality set as soon as possible. Sometimes they will be available in the crypt store in two consecutive seasons. Sometimes uh, they will be available as drop in a tower. In a general case, you will need those friendships or brutalities uh, when you're fighting a boss that will get revived or will cheat that eventually. Brutalizing this boss will make sure that you will avoid unnecessary suffering and will make sure that you can beat the fight because there will be so many annoying fights when the enemy is going to escape and you can do nothing about it. So make sure that you get a friendship or a brutality set. And finally, when it comes to opening packs, remember, having a few characters maxed out is more important than having every character fusion too. You must have a few strong diamonds and a few strong golds that will help you in towers and the crypt spam. So build yourself a strategy that aims at maxing out specific diamonds and diamond team first, just like we talked about getting a few golds at high fusion in the beginning. Thus, opening only classic or MK11 pack until you have some diamonds at good fusion will make sense. At the same time, opening a random diamond packs and not having a single strong diamond will hinder your progress in MK Mobile. And last but not least, the most important tip, do not forget to have fun in MK Mobile. Do not get discouraged if you are unable to complete Fatal Tower, this will inevitably happen. Remember, this is the ultimate end game mode in MK Mobile. Your time will eventually come and you're going to beat. If not this one, you're going to beat the next one. Just focus on normal tower until you get strong enough to beat Fatal. Alright guys, it's going to be all for you today. If you want to get more information on what to do in the beginning, I'm going to list in the description of this video a full playlist where I started from scratch and beat Fatal Tower in 38 days. There you're going to find a lot of resources on what I'm going to do in the first day, what I'm doing in the first few days, what I'm doing in the first week, and so on and so forth. So if you find this video useful, remember to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and have an amazing rest of your day. Take care guys. Perfect.